and welcome to my Four Boys and ML Girl podcast. My name is Patty, and here comes Bella the cat. Bella is one of our two cats. We have Bella and Angel, and they always like to come visit when I'm taping a podcast. They, um, it is the Father's Day, Sunday Father's Day on June 18th. It is Father's Day, June 18th, and I am taping just before lunch, so if you hear some cacophony in the background, it are two of my boys are home, one, um, my oldest son, and, and my husband are away with the final cub event of the year, so they're out playing, and the other two are playing video games, but there's some fighting happening, so we'll see if uh, I have to take a break in my podcast taping and go downstairs and separate them. There's Bella. Um, there has been, it has been such a busy time over the past few weeks. I think June, I find the month of June to be one of the most bu busiest months of the year. Um, this year we decided to hold my, two of my son's birthday parties. Their birthdays are in July, but we decided to hold them uh, in June and their parties were yesterday. And then I haven't done a podcast in a couple of weeks, so I've got so much to tell you about. Um, one of which is uh, involves a work in project in progress. I don't have any finished objects to show you today. Um, I have several works in progress that I want to show you, and the first one is a, is a rug hooking project that I'm working on. I haven't posted anything or shown you anything about my hooking in a while because I haven't really had anything on the frame. But on the first weekend in June, um, there was a hook in. And a hook in is when a whole bunch of rug hookers get together and hook together. And there was a hook in in Springdale, Newfoundland. And so myself and several members of the Rug Hooking Guild went out to Springdale to hook with everybody. And I want to show you the piece that I started there. I had, didn't have anything on the frame when I went out. I just drew this up. It's going to be a, a hooked rug for my husband. It's to go next to the bed on his side of the bed. And uh, I picked poppies because I'm really in love with poppies right now. I love the spring poppies. And because he's a veteran of the forces, I also thought it would be appropriate as well. I have to go separate the boys. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I had to talk to the boys about uh, fighting during the video game. So here is the rug that I was talking about. And I, hopefully the camera will focus enough for you to see it. So there's one big poppy in the middle, two poppies on either side. Um, it's going to be go from here to here so about a two foot by three foot rug this will be my largest rug to date hopefully the camera is focusing on that I have my little needle keep here so if I use it when I'm hooking for a hook or a um, scissor keep and that is from Paula at Kelmscott Designs I'll put that information on the screen. So that's the poppy that I'm working on now. I'm working this on linen, which I haven't worked on before. And you know what? I may never go back to burlap again. It's, uh, I love working on the linen. Apparently the linen is, uh, not only is it sturdier, it lasts longer than burlap. So I use burlap for um, all of my other hooking. But I think linen might be what I'm doing using from now on. So. That's my rug. I'm really happy with the poppies. I'm using a mix of door, that's D-O-R-R, -R, door um, wool. I've got some t-shirt fabric in there. Um, this, there's, there's the t-shirt that's more door wool. This is actually alpaca in here in the middle of the poppy because I love that texture. So this is a variety, I have a variety of different types of fiber that I'm using in my poppies and different colors because I like the colors for the reds and that's usual when I uh, hook. I usually use different fibers and lots of different colors. So there's that project. So that was the first weekend of June. I went hooking and then after the first weekend um, so following the hooking weekend, I went away again. Um, my Mother's Day gift this year was a trip to Toronto and Kingston, Ontario, and that was from my lovely husband and my boys. They have been totally supportive of my um, 
yarny endeavors because I went to Ontario to shop for yarn and go to yarn shops and meet with knitty friends and it was absolutely awesome. It was a fantastic trip and I have all kinds of pictures and footage to show you of that. Because I have so many pictures and so much footage, I'm actually only, to, only going to show you um, some pictures from the beginning of the trip to keep my podcast less than half an hour. And then I'll show you, next time I tape, I will show you the second part of my trip, which will include my trip, the part of the trip where I was in Kingston. And then, uh, so then that podcast will also have lots of information in it, and I can keep that podcast at less than half an hour because I like to keep my podcasts at that point. So I flew into Toronto on Thursday, the 8th of June and left uh, all of my boys, they dropped me off at the airport and I left them here at home. I was flying um, with Porter Airlines, so you'll see a little bit of, I'm not necessarily, Porter's a great airline, I'm not necessarily advertising for Porter, but you will see some Porter footage in my, in this video and the next video. So I got into Toronto on Thursday, it was beautiful, it was a glorious, just a beautiful, beautiful blue skies and a beautiful sunny day. So I got into Toronto City Airport, which is where Porter flies into. And then I got the shuttle up to Union Station. And from there, I hadn't used the subway or the um, Toronto City transit system before, so I decided that the first day I would do mainly walking. And um, so I walked from Union Station to my hotel, which was the Courtyard Marriott, and that was quite an hour. My suitcase behind me. Now, I just bought a carry-on suitcase and a um, um, my purse and my knitting bag, so it actually wasn't that uh, strenuous to carry, but it was a longer distance than I had expect expected. So I got to the hotel, got freshened up a bit, and then I went out looking for yarn shops. And the first yarn shop I found was called Yarns Untangled, and that is, I'll put the address on the screen because I can't remember, and you know, I was so excited about being there and finding the yarn shop successfully and using the map and being in Toronto all by myself and uh, just overwhelmed with the whole city experience that I forgot to take pictures of Yarns Untangled and I also forgot to take pictures of the next yarn shop which was Romney Wool's that I went into. So I apologize for that. I may have, um, I'll check my phone and see if I have any pictures on that from Yarns Untangled but I really don't think that I do. So I'm sorry Yarns Untangled, however I did make a purchase there. I was looking for, um, I had heard that they had carried um, Riverside Studio Yarns, which is a indie dyer from Wakefield, Quebec, that I have been following on my Instagram feed for quite some time. And I wanted to go in and feel her yarn and uh, pick out some colorways for myself, so I did. So this first one is actually going to become a pair of socks for my husband. It is, again, Riverside Studios. Um, this colorway is Creek. This is Superwash Merino Nylon Sock, which is an 80-20 blend, and that's the colors there. It's beautiful browns and greens, and then blue on the back there. So just gorgeous. So that's going to be a pair of socks for my husband. If I ever knit the man a pair, another pair of socks, I'll show you why I say that now in a minute. And then the other color is called little burgundy and I picked this up as exactly the same superwash merino nylon sock 8020 blend and it's browns and purples I was kind of in a fallish mood I guess when I was there even though the weather was beautiful um, the colorways that were there were fairly dark so there's some red in there as well and gorgeous burgundies and purples so those are going to be socks for me so I thought it would be nice to have sort of matching pair of socks from Riverside Studios. So those are made in Canada. And uh, Yarns Untangle was a lovely little shop. Lots of uh, selection there. The lady there was really friendly. 
And I would definitely recommend going in there again. I'll put the address on the on the screen. So then after I hit there, I started to walk down uh, Spadina, I think. Anyway, I, I walked it headed towards Romney Wools. And again, I didn't get pictures. I, um, I think at this point I was fairly hungry. I was tired. Um, I'd done a lot of walking. My feet were hurting <laughs> quite a bit. And I found Romney Wool. Romney Wool is like a uh, more, instead of more of a, I guess what I describe as a boutique yarn shop, it's very big. It's more like a yarn department store. And I found it completely overwhelming. Um, there's yarn everywhere. There's, it's stacked as high as the ceiling, which is probably 20 feet high. Um, there, there's certainly lots of selection, but it's the kind of place that for me, I would have had to go in with a specific list. And I was only browsing on this trip. I wasn't there to find X, Y, and Z. So I ended up not buying anything at Romney Wool's um, because, well, I guess a variety of reasons, but mainly because I was totally overwhelmed and found that I couldn't find exactly, I guess, probably exactly what I was looking for was there, but I couldn't find it. I found it would be a very busy store and, um, not as friendly as the other, uh, unfortunately, not as friendly as the other urine stores that I found, so that was too bad. But I found it, and I made it there, and then I walked back from there, and uh, on the way to the ho back to the hotel, I found a pub to have my supper at. And that was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon or 4.30 when everybody else was just having drinks. I was having a full-blown supper because, um, according to my body, it was way past supper time because of the time change. It's just an hour and a half, but enough that... Uh, when meals came up, I was getting hungrier earlier than everybody else in Ontario. Like I said, the weather was stunning. The um, uh, I had a gorgeous walk, and then I got back to the hotel and had a shower and pretty much crashed. <laughs> so I had I was I'd said my feet really hurt. I was really sore from all the walking. And uh, the next morning, I knew that uh, physically I couldn't walk as far as I'd done the day before and it was time to start using the Toronto public transit system. So I, um, I learned how to use the tube system or underground subway system in London, so I was fairly confident I would figure it out, but I didn't know where to purchase tickets, so I found that out from the hotel um, uh, front desk. And went and bought my, I bought a day pass, and I made sure I got good use of my day pass, because I went from, um, I went from the hotel, I took the bus right out to another yarn store called Units, and they didn't open till 11 o'clock, which was great because I got there. I got there about an hour, around 10 o'clock. So I had plenty of time to scope out where the store was. And then I got myself a drink at uh, McDonald's. I know not very posh to go to McDonald's when you're in Toronto, but I went, I just wanted a Coke. I just wanted something cool to drink for that time I was hot and thirsty. And I uh, headed over uh, very close to units. There's a little park. So I went to the park and I sat on the grass with the pigeons and I knit and I relaxed and I watched, there was uh, somebody was taping either a podcast or a movie or something with a huge big camera just down the walkway from me. So I watched them with interest. Um, there was a man who, who um, uh, was talking to the pigeons. So I watched him for a little while. Anyway, it was uh, great. I managed to kill some time in a relaxing way until 11 o'clock and then headed over to units.
and units. I fell in love with units. Um, units and the Purple Pearl that I went to uh, that second day, I fell in love with both of the stores. But I'll tell you all about units first, and because I'm going to save the Purple Pearl for my next podcast. Um, so units is it's kind of got a uh, it's more of a high end boutique yarn shop, I would say. The, uh, the quality of the yarn there is fantastic. They have a huge selection, and I'll put lots of footage in, interspersed with my conversation in on the podcast so you can see the inside of Units because it is a gorgeous shop. The lady there was really friendly and helpful, and uh, I was having... <laughs> I was really needy. Um, I was I wasn't the only person in the store, but I kind of took over in a way. Um, I kept asking information about pricing and about kits and about this and about that and ooing and on over the store. And although I was overwhelmed, I was determined not to leave that store without doing some shopping. So I just stayed there and shopped and shopped and shopped and took pictures. Um, and it was just wonderful. They also units also has a fabric selection where they carry a lot of Liberty. Um, fabric and lawn fabric and voile fabric it was just it was gorgeous I didn't end up buying any fabric and that was kind of intentional um, I wasn't looking for anything in particular and I was afraid once I, if I started buying fabric as well I wasn't going to fit everything in my suitcase I was trying to stick to yarn so let me show you my haul from units so first of all I'm going to start the crinkling it all came in this gorgeous little bag units bag hopefully the camera will focus on that Okay, so the first first thing I bought at Units, actually, which I'm using right now, and I'll show you for my works in progress. Oh, I'm doing this backwards. I'm showing you my works in progress, and I'm telling you all about Toronto. Oh, well, we'll do, we'll do works in progress at the end of the podcast today. So this is by Madras Sol Solteros. It's a fair-traded um, company that they work with. So what they do is Unit sends a bunch of their fabric down to this company and they sew them up in the fabric bags for them. So this is a gorgeous drawstring bag that I bought. One of my projects has been in there ever since I purchased this. So there was that. I bought this book called Felt With Love by Madeline Millington. And it is a gorgeous felting book. Here's the back, and I just fell in love with some of the projects in here. And I have a lot of felted wool because I hook, but I don't usually embroider with them. So I thought, so there's a just a sample of a gorgeous little hanging. And I'll show you the main reason I purchased this book. Two main reasons. One is are these gorgeous pin cushions, because I sew and I love the pin cushions. I thought that was a great idea. That was one. The other one is this angel find her. Where are you? This angel. I thought it's just stunning. I would look gorgeous in the wall. So with that, I just I also picked up a couple of pieces of felt just to kind of augment what I don't have. So that was just lovely. So I got that there. So then I Eunice does up kits and the, the owner whose name I didn't get, actually I can tell you in a second, because her name will be on this pattern. Again, I apologize for the crinkling. So I got this pattern for a, a Grace Hand Warmers, and it's by Unit, just Unit. It doesn't say who the, uh, what the name of the lady is. I know it was the, it is the owner of Units that, uh, that um, designed these. Anyway, so hopefully the camera will focus on that. That's, and I know it's a very wintry project, but it was made at a cashmere and they had a sample there and it was gorgeous and I couldn't resist so I picked up two balls of cashmere. These are Lang Cashmere Premium. Uh, these are 25 gram balls and this color is, I don't know, I don't know, anyway it's a brown, the camera focuses on that and this one's kind of a blue with a bit of a gray um, color. So those two together, I think are gonna make stunning fingerless gloves. And I don't know if these hand warmers are gonna be for me or for somebody else. Um, it's, I didn't really, I picked up colors I liked, not necessarily colors that would match with anything that I was, else that I was purchasing, but I thought those were just stunning. So I'm thrilled with that. Um, uh, 
those for another time. Okay, I'm just checking my receipt here. Okay, and the other thing that I bought at UNIF is I got, this is called the Muskoka shawl. Again, it is designed by units. Hopefully, again, the camera focuses on that. I'll put that information uh, for the recovery note on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of my screen. And I picked up this. So this is a Muskoka call, but they had a, a shawl, but they had another colorway there. And I picked up the yarn for a different colorway. So these are all blue sky fibers. And it's called wool stock worsted, and it's just beautiful. I don't know much about blue sky. It's 100% fi uh, fine Highland wool. And let me show you the colors that I got because they're just beautiful. So there's the dark gray. This is the lighter gray. And then instead of the red and green, well, I got a green, but so I guess the burgundy and green, I opted for a light green with this heathered green. I don't usually buy 100% wool, I have to say. I'm really picky about my wool. I find Briggs & Little, for example, too scratchy to use against the skin, or even as mitts or hat for me, I find it too scratchy. This, though, it's 100% wool, and it's not merino, it's just 100% fine highland wool, is gorgeous. I can wear it right next to the skin. I'm not going to because it's going to be a huge winter shawl, so I probably have a t-shirt or something underneath it. But this yarn is absolutely beautiful. So again, it is Blue Sky Fibers Wool Stock Worsted. I'll put all the information on the bottom of the screen. And the it's made in Peru. Blue Sky. Yay! I love it. So all that fit into my beautiful little bag here. All right, didn't need to podcast about you watching me put that away. So that's as much as I'm going to show you upon my shopping in Toronto. I will save the rest for the next podcast. But so I want to show you my works in progress. So I had shown you this beautiful bag that I got at Units. And I am working on a shawl that many people have done because it's very popular on Ravelry. It's called the Age of Brass and Steam Kerchief. Mine's going to be a shawlette because I'm making it um, fairly large. I'm actually using, and I picked this up at units as well, the Chiagu, I think that's how you say it, Chiagu, um, Premium Stainless Steel Red Lace Circular Needles, and I love them. I'm pretty much a Knit Picks exclusive girl, but I decided when I was there for that, the shawl I just show you the yarn for, I decided when I was in the shop that I would try another brand of, um, of needles. I've tried Haya Haya and I don't like them. Um, so I decided I'd try the Chiagu and I love them. I love them. I was just gonna say I got a live lace and drive Amanda nuts. Okay, so here is the shawl. So I've got that much done. I think it's working out beautifully. So this is the yarn that I'm using. Where's my tag? Took out my tag and then I lost it. Oh, there it is. It's Legacy Fiber Arts. So it's Chelsea and Sue. This is one of their colorways from Christmas. It's called the Four Main Food Groups and it's based on the movie Elf. So this is more of a Christmas colorway, but I thought the colors were bright and springy as well. So I'm finishing it in the spring or summer, if we ever have summer here in Newfoundland. I've left Toronto on Tuesday morning and it was 29 degrees and I got into Newfoundland and it was five degrees. <laughs> so we may or may not be getting summer this year, I'm not sure. So this base is called Cozy Toes. It's an 80% 80, 80 merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon four ply and 435 yards on the skein. So I'm suspecting I'm gonna have a little bit left over. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough. I was thinking with the, it would be really nice if I had this chalette finished, and then if I used um, any leftovers to make a hat, I would need to mix the hat with something else, and I'll probably mix it with, um, I'll find a tonal red or something at my local yarn store to put with it. 
or uh, or I'll do a whole bunch of of ends I'm not sure we'll see but anyway that's what I'm working on there this I only started this when I went on the trip so I got a fair bit of knitting done I've got one more this I'm using a different weight than the pattern calls for so basically I'm just doing it as it looks what looks right to me from the picture using I'm using the same pattern but I'm putting in like in between these two sections I'm putting four inches so I still got to get four inches here and then there's gonna be another eyelet row and then there's another probably inch and a half to knit and then I'm done so I'm not too far away on that one depends how much time knitting I get this week and to be honest I'm not sure how much knitting time I'm gonna get this week let's see my other work in progress you'll be pleased to know that I started back on my husband's socks so I don't know if you remember but a while back so a while back I had worked on my husband's socks I put in one afterthought heel and it didn't work um, it, it didn't fit over his arch so of all the suggestions that I got I collected and the main the best the suggestion that I used was to add uh, three or four more rows in the afterthought heel before I started decreasing so I took out that heel put in the three I put in four extra rows and now it works perfectly so then I did both so now I've got two afterthought heels and I'm so pleased because they're my first afterthought heels and they worked and I did them and I feel pretty confident about doing afterthought heels now so I'm really in love with these they fit my husband perfectly which is wonderful and he's kind of of the opinion just stick with the same pattern patty you know just do what your mom always does and, and that always seems to work out and the thing is mom's patterns are in her head and though she's tried to write them down for me, I can't follow them very well. So this is um, Susan B. Anderson's Smooth Operator Socks. And I'm trying to get familiar enough. I like the pattern, so I'm hoping that that's going to become my go-to vanilla sock pattern. That's my goal. So now here's the funny part of the story. I knit, I, was, I didn't have my husband's feet with me, and I forgot to measure them before I left, which was a huge oversight. I should have, because I would have gotten more knitting done on these, but not as much done on my shawl. So I guess it's six and one half dozen the other. So I measured from here to here, and I knit them as long as to the top of my own toes. And I thought, well, my feet are quite a bit smaller than his, but that should be long enough. So I better stop because I don't want to end up having to take out rows because I've got it too long. <laughs> well, so I've knit, I think these are seven inches, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, these are six inches long is how much I have knit. Well, my husband wears a size 11. Do you think this is going to fit him? No. I have to knit three more inches before I even start the toes. So I thought it was really funny that I thought I had enough knit, and I really, really don't. The kids are fighting again, so I apologize. If there's more yelling, I'll go down and deal with that. Uh, so anyway, so these are my two socks. They're both at exactly the same point in time. So I'm going to continue knitting those, and I really hope to have these finished soon. I'd hope to have them finished for today, which is Father's Day but I don't. That's about all that I have to tell you about today. I hope you enjoy the footage that I'm going to show you. The first um, footage that I'm going to show you on this podcast, or if you've probably already seen it, is some footage of the Springdale area where we were um, staying in a log cabin for our hook-in. And then the rest of the uh, footage is going to be for my trip to Toronto, in which I'm sure you'll be able to tell which parts are Springdale and which parts are Toronto. The cold and wet parts are Newfoundland, Labrador, and Springdale, and the warm and sunny parts are taken in Toronto, Ontario. So thank you very much for joining me on my podcast. I really love doing these podcasts. It's great that you come and watch me. For anybody who's new, I hope you enjoy what you've seen. I always have a little bit of footage of something with my podcast. Usually it's Newfoundland Labrador, but because I was away, there's a little bit of a, a um, change from the usual. And for anybody who is, has come back to see me for more times than one, then thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. I hope you get time this week to stay out and do something nitty or crafty that makes your heart happy. Take care. Bye-bye.